I invite you to the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, October the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, 400 North uh, Olive Street, North Olive Street, Dallas, Texas, October the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. I welcome you. I invite you. No requirements to come. It's free to all. And I look forward to seeing you as you're there with me in Dallas, Texas. Blessings to all of you all as you're joining on. Share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Um, sanct sanctification is the wisdom for growth. You can't grow in the same atmosphere as people that's going to Broadway. The way that you grow is because the Lord going to set you apart, set you aside. You have to discern the symptoms of loneliness. The symptoms of loneliness is most times protection from being contaminated. Remember this. The symptoms of loneliness. You have to remember that In that place is protection from contamination. Saints, do you know the extreme that God will go so that you don't get contaminated? Do you know the extreme that God will go so that you won't be corrupted? And the sanctification, it protects you from contamination. Because there's news, there's words, there's conversation, there's information that could pervert your soul and create tradition in you. Saints, what creates, uh, whatever creates tradition corrupts your position with God. Whatever creates your, um, creates, uh, your tra uh, creates your tradition, it corrupts your position with God. The Lord want to get you away from tradition. Now, now, what's the real uh, root of tradition? Rebellion. That's what it stops. It stops the spirit of God from moving through you. So if you, if you have tradition operating in you, the next part is that the Lord not going to be able to tell you what he wants because that tradition going to combat it. Sanctification help you from having tradition growing in you. Sanctification is the wisdom for growth. It's the wisdom for increase. Remember the father told Abram, leave your father's house. Leaving the father's house was going to permit the atmosphere of God to be with Abram so that he can become very rich, so that he can become the father of many nations, for him to become prosperous. So his prosperity was in his detachment. Your prosperity is in your detachments. Your prosperity is in your ability to disconnect. Do you know the people in your life that are not going anywhere with God? Because you don't go places with the Lord just because you say, oh, I'm going to go places with the Lord. You go places with the Lord off of sacrifice, off of surrender, submission, sensitivity, and diligence. Do you know the people in your life that's not going anywhere with Jesus? You know, I'm starting to uh I'm starting to see as I as I um as I'm growing in wisdom, I'm starting to see that hunger is going to be the deciding factor whether or not the Lord can remain a chef in your life. If he can continue to feed you. What's going to decide that is hunger. The form of godliness won't suffice for the feeding realm of God. For him able to uh, teach you, anoint you, increase you, uh, keep taking you higher. You got to be hungry. Spend your days captivating your hunger. Captivating your hunger. 
Because if you don't get hungry, nothing that the Lord wants to do for you is going to be able to take place. And when you're hungry, it's nothing that can deter you in this life. Not people. Not sickness. Not lack. Nothing can deter you. When you're hungry, there's a focus, a divine focus that you carry. When you're hungry, your wisdom go to the next level. When you're hungry, Jesus want to talk to you more. Why would you put a plate of food in somebody's presence that don't want to eat? Why would you keep on supplying food in the presence of someone that don't want to eat? The reason why you keep supplying food is because you see hunger. Hunger is a signal for God's impartation. Hunger qualifies you for other people's promotion. When you hungry, God will give you the promotion of Saul because you David. You killed the bear. You protected the sheep. So now he want to give to you what was scheduled for Saul. Did you ever think that Jesus received the reward that Adam, the first Adam could have received? Dominion. Increase. Victory. Wisdom. Did you notice that Satan tried to talk to the second Adam too? Jesus. But Jesus, because he hungry, as the son of God, he's operating from a place of snatching the mantles that was scheduled for Adam. Saints, that woman in the Garden of Eden represented the church. So what does Jesus do? He picks Mary. Mary becomes his woman. The Holy Spirit comes upon her. She carries Jesus in her womb. She gives birth to Jesus. She's at the tomb. She's at the crucifixion. She's telling the people at the wedding. All throughout the Bible, she's telling the people at the wedding, whatever he tell you to do, do it. Because that's what the church is supposed to do. Get people into the second Adam. Get people to follow the voice of his instruction. Sanctification is the wisdom for growth. God will pick the atmosphere so that you won't be in fear no longer. He'll pick the atmosphere. Sanctification is the wisdom for growth. Your sanctification will produce your virtue as a woman. When you're a woman, you can't listen to what everybody else is saying. Not everybody is, is a divine woman. Some women are Jezebelic. Some women are, are fools. When you're a man, you can't listen to what other men are saying. Because some men are not destined to carry the, the wealth of God, the assignments of God, the, the kingdom of God. They're not designated for that assignment. Sanctification is the wisdom for growth. Even God strategically picked the garden and then the Bible said that there was a mist of water that watered the garden. Because wherever God has planted you, he's going to keep watering you. You're going to keep on growing. Your, your wisdom going to keep on intensifying. And watch this. You can't afford to have anybody that's not as hungry as you to affect you. If you take a note, write this down. The ability to not look back will produce a higher level of fruitfulness with you and God. If you take a note, write that down. The ability to not look back will produce a higher fruitfulness between you and God. If you take a note, write this down. Lot's wife's spirit will engage you 
when your past is more interesting than your passion for God. Lot's wife. Remember what happened to Lot's wife? She looked back and got consumed. See, you, you got to be cautious of that. That's so you don't lose your fire for Jesus. Um, letting the dead bury the dead. Saints, I don't think about nobody that's not in my life. Not even one minute. If I know that Jesus don't want somebody in my life, I don't think about them. I don't check on them. I don't, I don't say anything to them at all. Saints, if you're going to be successful, you got to know who Jesus did not even send to you. Don't say nothing to them. <laughs> they're, not, they're not a part of your equation for this life. You're not trying to win their soul. You're not trying to deliver them. You're not trying to help them. You're not trying to talk with them. You're not trying to be their friend. You're not trying to open up their eyes. None of that. They're not assigned to your life, your path, your story. That's how you be successful. You got to know who's not in, in, in the equation of your path. Who's not in the equation of where, where God is taking you. And if they're not in the equation, you don't need to say anything to them. You don't need to conversate with them. Don't waste divine moments with people that's not divine. Uh, let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13. Look at this here. It says, Behold, there came a man of God out of Judah. By the word of the Lord. Now I want you to see what he came out of Judah. He came out of praise. This is where the woman of God, the man of God comes out of you. Through praise. Every time you're celebrating the Lord, the true you, who you're supposed to be, is coming forth. When you celebrate in King Jesus, that's when the true you coming forth. Uh, every other time. The true you come forth when you start celebrating God through praise. Look what, what, look, look, look what the word of God say. First Kings chapter 13 verse 1. And there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Verse 2, and he cried against the altar in, in the word of the Lord and said, Altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. Now, saints, uh, the prophet is prophesying that they're going to be burning people's bodies. Watch this in verse three. He, it said he gave a sign the same day. This is the sign which the Lord has spoken shall come to pass. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. OK, verse four. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried out against the altar in Bethel, the king went and put his hand against the prophet, saying, lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth, dried up so that he could not pull it again to himself. It withered. Okay, so the prophet is prophesying, right? And, and he goes to shut the prophet up. And the word of God said that his hand withered. He lost his hand. Verse five, the altar was also rent and the ashes poured out according to the sign which the man of God told them that it would happen. Verse six, the king answered and said unto the man of God, please go before the face of the Lord your God and pray for me. So the king went go attack the prophet from Judah. When he put his hand to go attack him, 
his hand withered off. And when his hand withered off, in verse 6, he's asking, I, uh, pray for me, my hand is with it that it may be restored to me again. Now, I, I, want, I want you to see this. You know, hand symbolizes a lot of things, but hand is where you sow, hand is where you work, hand is where you reap, hand is where you get provision. I want you to understand it spiritually. See, your prophet is there to give you hands. So that you can prosper. So that you can have the word of God come into pass. You'll be successful with it. That's the reason why you have hands. Because the prophet is giving you wisdom, understanding how to produce what the word of God say you should have. I want you to see this. So, so you need the prophet. He put his hand against the prophet. The, then he lost his hands. He lost his prosperity. He lost his success in the spirit realm with God. Now, I don't want to stay too long on that because I, I, I want to touch on something else. I know some of y'all know, you, you probably think I'm going the direction. Like if you attack a prophet, this is going to happen to you. Yeah. I know, I know you think I'm trying to go that route. But <laughs> if... You can't be listening to me and be stupid. Even God will help you. You could pick that out of nonsense because you're in the atmosphere of wisdom. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a wisdom carrier. So while you watching me, God will speak to you and tell you, don't never attack a prophet. So that's good. So I don't really have to preach on that because the Lord already telling you that. And you might get offended and you might try to be childish and say, oh, the heat town, so don't mess with no prophet. No, no, that's what the Lord telling you. A lot of times evil folk, when God speak to them, they try to pit it another way. But you know what God be saying to you. It be God saying it. You just mad. Since you ever see people on the line, you talking, oh, he going to ask for a seed. That's what God telling you to sow. So you switch it and try to slander what you hearing God tell you to do. See, you watching this, the Lord will pit, pit sense into this and let you know, don't never fight a prophet. Because cause look what happened to this king. He went go do it. He lost his hand. Okay, verse 6. So he prays for his hand to be restored. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored back unto him again. And became as it was before. So the prophet prayed, and he got back the hand. Look at verse seven. And the king said unto the man of God, come home with me. And refresh yourself. And I will give you a reward, meaning I'm going to give you some money. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you some provision, some substance, some wealth, some finances. Look at verse eight. And the man of God said unto the king, if you will give me half of your house, I still will not go with you. Look at this, saints. This is powerful. Look what he said right here. He tells him, if you was to give me half of your house, I still won't go with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in your place. Do you see this? Now, I want you to catch this. The man of God is being offered by the king. I want to bless you with some money. I want, I want to take care of you, show you some love. And the prophet said, no, if you was to give me half of your house, I still want to go with you. 
Now, here's what you want to catch. The prophet mentioned several streams. And I, I want to step into the wisdom anointing on this and, and share something real powerful. Okay, I'm into wisdom anointing now. <laughs> Just look at this here. He said, if you give me half of thy house. Okay, that's a stream. Neither will I eat bread. That's a stream. Another stream. Or drink water. That's another stream. In this place, that's another stream. This is what I want you to catch. To remain prophetic, to remain in the spirit, to remain in the way, in the mindset, in the attitude, in the functionality, in the character, in the assignment, in the direction, in the instruction that the Lord had for his life. He had to refuse half the house, that's a stream, bread, that's a stream, water, that's a stream, in this place, that's a stream. What does this signify? He had to reject the kingdom of Satan. Everything that Satan was offering him, he had to say no. Remember, Jesus said, pray, give us this day our daily bread. But Satan is offering him bread. He said no. That bread is not for my partaking. Jesus said that he is the living water. The enemy offers him water. Jesus said in my father's house, there are many mansions. He offers him from the household. The king offered him from his own household. But the prophet knows this is not my household. This is not my system. This is not the kingdom in which I've come from. It's not permitted by God for me to partake of this stream. What the prophet is showing you here that in your life you got to be you got to be cautious of this as well. When another stream is operating and you're offered that stream and you have to stay in the stream that the Lord pitched you. You can't go to the left or to the right. You can't compromise. Cuz that's not your stream. It don't matter if the stream look like it's interesting or it, it's not the stream that God has you in. So you got to refuse it. This go in line with the word, the word of God said, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Submit yourself unto God, resist the devil. You got to resist the devil because he going to give you offers. He going to offer you pathways. He going to offer you friendships with people. Did you know that Satan offers you friendships with people? Do you know how many people are friends with each other right now that's not really supposed to be friends according to the plan of heaven? Wrong stream. Do you know that there are some women that will never make it to where they're supposed to be in life because of who they hang with? Wrong stream. If the person that you're hanging with is not going to make it to the palace, you're not going to make it to the palace either. Your association. Do you know how many men won't, won't step into their David realm, their Solomon realm, their, their Abrahamic realm? Because they have wrong association.
Okay, look at this here. And the king said unto the man of God, come home with me. The prophet knows that this is not his home because God isn't there. The prophet knows that this isn't the place where he's supposed to continue, abide, rest, plant himself. So he refuses. So verse eight, he refuses to eat the bread, half the house, water in this place, four different streams. Four different streams. Look at verse 9. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink, nor, nor turn in the same way that I came. So he's saying that the Lord told him not to go the same way that he came in. Now, look at this. This is so powerful. Verse uh, 10 said that he went another way. He went another way. So he had to contradict the way that was offered to him. He had to contradict the way that was an option to him to go the way that Jesus wanted him to go. Now, look at verse 10. Let's go further. It says, he turned not by the way that he came through Bethel. Now, verse 11. Now, there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and had seen what the way the man of God had went, which came from Judah. Now, I want you to see this. His sons are watching this prophet. So they come and tell their dad, uh, we know where the prophet is going. We, we, we've been watching him and we know where he came in from. Okay. Now look at verse, look at verse uh, 12. Verse 13 says, and he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode on the ass. Verse 14. He went after the man of God. When you are a man or a woman of God, Wrong people will be after you. When, when you are a man or a woman of God, wrong people will be after you. Look, this man does not have the right motive. But he's going after the man of God. For what? Not for nothing good. And found him sitting underneath an oak tree. And said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Wait. 
this person is at telling him to do the very same thing that the Lord told him not to do. But watch this. This man pursued him so strong just to tell him to do the very same thing that God doesn't want done. Look at the aggression. Look at the pursuit. That's the same way it is with the devil and his children. When Satan and his children are operating, and let, let me help you understand why I'm saying Satan children. I mean people that are not friends of Jesus. When Satan and his children are operating in the earth, those type of people are after you to always tell you to do something that God had already told you he does not want done. I want you to see this. The Bible said his sons went go tell him and he told his sons, saddle the ass for me. They saddle the ass. He's riding the ass to pursue after this man of God. He's pursuing him. He doesn't strategize. He pursuing him. He's aggressively going after him and he comes upon him and tells him, do what the Lord does not want you to do. Look what he said. Come home with me. So, so he's telling him to do the same thing that the king, the wicked king just did. And the prophet said, no. And now he's coming and he has the title of a prophet. But he's still carrying the the, the instruction of hell. Come home with me. And eat bread. Look at verse 16. And he said, I may not return with thee. See, not a prophet telling him, I will not return with thee, nor go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. Okay. So now the prophet is telling him, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm not eating. Now, here's where it takes a spin. And you're going to have these moments in your life. You're going to have moments like these in your life. Look what it says right here. In verse 14, uh, verse 17, it says, For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink any water, nor turn again the same way that you came in. Let's go to verse 18. And he said unto him, But I am a prophet. I am a prophet also as you are. Uh-oh. Now, the second statement is a lie. He said, and an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with thee. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Look at this. Look, look. He tells him, I'm a prophet too, just like you. And the Lord told me, 
The Lord told me, the angel of the Lord. No, no, watch this. He said, and the and an angel spoke unto me. Now, this is what I want you to catch in this text. When he said an angel spoke to me, what the prophet should have thought about, what type of angel? Because remember, there's Satan and his angels. There's Satan and his angels. He said, an angel spoke to me. So, what kind of angels? Is there an angel of the Lord or the angels that rebelled against God? He said, I am a prophet too, as you are. Now here's where it get fishy. The angel of the Lord spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with thee into your house that he may eat bread, drink water. And the Bible said, but he lied unto him. Saints, the word of God said in the text that he lied unto him. Wow. He told him that an angel spoke to him, told him, bring him back. And the word of God said, but he lied to him. Now he's a, he, he said that he's a prophet. But I'm going to say something to you that you never heard before. The word of God said that the old prophet, With him being the old prophet. He's not going to understand the new thing that God is doing. Because he's in the old. He's not in the new. There's a reason why the Bible was said the old prophet. He's not just old in years. He old in version. Release, dispensation, season, stream. He got an old stream. This man of God is in a new stream. I'm able to teach this so accurately because of I've, I've, I've lived life. So I, you know, this text is real perplexed is a parable. And, and most times you really got to experience this to even rightly divide this story. I know that there are people that are truly prophets. I know that they are prophets. But if you listen to them when God done spoke to you, especially as a leader, they will throw you off. Are they a prophet? Yes, they are a prophet. But will they lie to you if you on a path and, and God didn't send them to you? Yes. 
Will they tell you things to do that God is not telling you to do? Yes, because they're not your leader. They're not who God assigned to you. I know because I, I've experienced life. I've seen many things. I know. I know. I know without a shadow of a doubt. I know, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I've been here. Let me see something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. My God. I want to show you something real quick. I want to show you something real quick. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29 says this. It says, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another prophet that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Now, this is very powerful. You, you know why this is so amazing? Because look what it's telling you right here. It says that while the prophets are prophesying, let two or three speak and let the other judge. Now, then verse 30 says, if anything be revealed to the another prophet, that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Look at verse 31. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. What I want you to see here that all these prophets have different streams. So look, if one prophet is immature, What he'll do is he'll look at the other person's stream and start combating it and say, this is not how God operate. This is not of God. But what he failed to understand, look, 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 look at, let, let me go back here. Let me go back here. That if someone is in another stream, they have other revelations that you're not getting. Because the stream is access to the revelation, the wisdom, the secret of God concerning that particular impartation that you're carrying, that anointing that you're carrying. So, what Apostle Paul apostolically was given wisdom because if you're immature and you at grade eight, everybody has to be at grade eight with you. The people at grade nine will hate you. I, I mean, or, 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 or will um, confuse you, rather. The people in grade 10 will seem demonic. They will look satanic. Why? Because another has, another revelation has been revealed to them. Another stream has been revealed to them. So if you are in grade eight and you're a prophet, 
and you're immature. Everybody has to be in grade eight or they're wrong. If someone is at grade 11, they're satanic. They're demonic. But what Apostle Paul was showing, that should not be. Because God will reveal to another prophet something that you don't know. But watch what it said. Let all prophesy that the body may learn. So there's a reason why God gives someone a specific stream of wisdom. Because the body in that area will hear something fresh from that stream that they may learn from that stream. If everybody is in the same stream, nobody's going to grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. My God. My God. Watch this. For you all may prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. So these are different streams of revelation, different grade levels of impartation being combined here. Now, let's go to verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So it's a love thing. It's a love thing. It's not the uh, competition, it's not hatred, it's not um, destruction, it's not division, it's a love thing. Look what it say right here. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So it's a love thing. Now, look what it say right here. For God is not the author of confusion. You know you hear this a lot. Religious people say this a lot. But look where this was found in the Bible. It was found in the Bible dealing with prophets. Apostle Paul is saying, let this be done orderly. Because God is not the author of confusion. So if you ever see the overriding of conflict and other stuff like that, it's proof that another spirit is operating. It's not the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God going to let order be there and it's going to create peace. Bless all the peacemakers, but they shall be called the sons of God. That's what Jesus preached. So what Apostle Paul was saying God is not the author of confusion. So if you see it any other way that how I'm telling you, you know that something is terribly wrong. Because every prophet got their own stream. Let, let's read it one more time. Let's read it one more time. Let's read it one more time. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Look what it says right here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's look at it one more time. Or 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 29. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the others judge. Verse 30. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Saints, do you know I have been in meetings before with another prophet? And when he would speak, I would be quiet. I wouldn't interject. Because I'm subject to the spirit of God and I'm subject to peacemaking. I'm, I'm just giving you an example. So watch this. 
My assignment as a prophet of Jesus, as a prophet of God, is to yield my members to the Holy Ghost in every scenario. So the, the wisdom for the scenario is this. If anything be revealed to another that saved by, let the first hold his peace. Order and peace. See, this is what the prophetic does, especially when you're dealing with another uh, prophet or someone else that's in the prophetic rank. For you may all prophesy one by one. I've been there before. I remember I was in Zimbabwe. We, we prophesied probably for like, probably like six, I think it was about six hours straight. It was like an all night thing. There were several prophets in the building. I would prophesy, and others would prophesy, but we all would let each other go. And we, we got into a stream where we would ricochet off of each other. So one would be talking to one. We might get a revelation with one, but we'll wait. Until it was our time. Nobody fighting against each other. It's a flow. The one talking, you wait. You don't stop him because God showed you something and say, hey, shop, shop, shop. The Lord told me, they go and then you, in, you can interject. You go and then someone else can interject. And that happened for like, like six, six hours, if I understand. I think it was more hours than that, but that, that's what I, I assumed it was six hours. We, we was there for like all night, basically. Or like midnight to six or something. But what I'm telling you is that that's the order in the prophetic. Nobody is disrespecting the next person's revelation. Everybody is mature. Now, look at this here. Let's go to verse 14. Uh, 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 chapter 14. Let's go to verse um, 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Now, uh, this will be a little touchy subject, but I'll, I'll go here. I know, I know a large margin of you follow me that, um, but let's go here. Verse 34, it says, let your woman keep silence in the churches. And I'll explain this. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. Look at verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for woman to speak in the church of God. What is Apostle Paul talking about here? Now, Apostle Paul is getting real raw here because he said, tell the woman to shut up. Now, saints, I want you to hear this. Apostle Paul was dealing with the woman of that day because while he would be teaching or anyone would be teaching, they'll be asking questions. They didn't have wisdom. They didn't have divine timing. So, so the person will be up there talking. Well, well, well da, 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 da. They're talking. So what he was saying, as you can see in the final text, he's saying in verse 35, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Because see, they was doing it in the church. And it was causing a distraction. It was diverting the attention from the teaching or the other dot. You see? 
Do you see? So Apostle Paul was telling them, let them learn at home. Don't let them interrupt the service and interrupt the teaching and interrupt the impartation. You know, so saints, that's why you see me a lot of times. I tell people, shut sh up. Because they saying something that's going to divert the attention off of what I'm teaching, you know. And then it mess up the anointing. Because now everybody go off on that. Oh, yeah. How many sisters did Jesus have? Because somebody asked, how many sisters did Jesus have? And now everybody said, well, yeah, how much sisters did Jesus have? And you, you're not talking about how much sisters Jesus have. <laughs> so it wasn't saying that woman are not authorized to talk or like they can never talk because we know Jesus raised up women to preach. I don't know who, but I know Jesus raised up women to preach. But what he was saying was don't let them bring a distraction. All right. But let me just say this. We like when women and, and, and women are excited about the word. You can talk, you can shout, you can praise God, you can glorify God. This is dealing with like acts and dumb stuff. You understand? This dealing with like saying things that's going to take people out of the spirit. Like cause the whole attention to shift off of the impartation the man of God has given. But you, you're supposed to be lively and excited and glorify God and praise God and shout and say, thank you, Lord. You, you're supposed to. But with the other realm of question, it brings distraction because it's not the time or the place to ask a question. Now, we dealt with that. Now, let's go back here. I want I want to finish this. OK, so the prophet said, I am a prophet. And the angel of the Lord spoke to me. I'm in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 18. And by the word of the Lord said to me, bring him back unto your house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. The word of God said that this was a lie. Now, one thing that I want you to catch about this text. Repesa I feel the anointing on this. I, I, I feel the anointing on this. I feel the anointing on this. Praise God. Rapa Sarama. Now, let's deal with this real quickly. I want you to see this. So, the, the young prophet is hearing, he's hearing, right hand of text, he's hearing, this prophet is telling him, the Lord, the angel of the Lord spoke to me. And, no, not even the angel of the Lord. The angel spoke to me and told me, come back to the house and bring, bring, you with me to eat and drink. And look what the word of God said. It said that he lied to him. It was a lie. It was not God. It was a lie. Rapa sorrema. Look at this here. Rapa sorrema. Now, okay, he's lying to him, but... 
God did not tell the prophet that he was going to have another prophet come tell him what to do. God had already told him. He had already heard the word of the Lord. Now this person comes on the scene and say, I'm a prophet too. And the angel, but listen, the Lord had already spoke to him. See, when the Lord speaks to you and, and you already heard from God, you can't let people deceive you down the wrong path and tell you something contrary and convince you of something that's wrong when the Lord done gave you all the confirmation, all the understanding that you need. He done spoke to you. He done confirmed to you. You done felt the anointing. You done felt the understanding on it. You done felt power on it. You're not looking for no uh, extra evidence. You already heard the Lord speak to you. And now somebody coming to you say, I am a prophet. And the angel came to me and told me, and, and watch what he said. Everything he's saying is completely opposite to what God done spoke to him. Now watch this. God had told him, don't eat or drink. The, the Lord done told him, I don't want you to eat. I don't want you to drink. I'm not telling. Listen, the Lord done said, listen, you're going to come here. Don't go here. Don't, you, you came from here. Don't go here, go here. And the man telling him everything that's contrary to what God done told him. God done told him already, don't eat or drink. The man saying the angel told me to tell you to come and eat and drink. It's completely opposite. Uh, since God will always speak to you and tell you before anything that's contrary comes. He always going to talk to you and he going to talk to you when nobody around you so that you can have an understanding. Saints, I'm going to tell you something about Jesus. Jesus don't leave nobody confused. He will come and speak to you plainly, clearly, when nobody around you so that when people do come around you and people do try to talk you out and people do try to deceive you, you can stand on the solid rock on which you stand and not sink in sand and you'll know the word of the Lord and you'll have a back. You'll have a backbone. You'll have a backup. But see, if you don't got that, see, then God can't judge you. But, but he always going to speak to you and give you confirmation and always tell you the truth and always tell you uh, uh, what is honest and let you know before anything so that when. Now, look what the word of God said. He told him the angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, but the Bible said he lied to him. Now, this story about to take a twist. And, and there's a shocking twist to this text. This story about to take a big twist. Because something about to happen that's real unexpected. Now the prophet already told him, I'm not going back with you. The prophet had already told him that, but watch what's about to happen. Something crazy about to take place. Watch this. So the young prophet went back to the house with him. Wait, young prophet. Young prophet. You done heard the Lord. Wait, not you, young prophet. Young prophet. You just going to diss God like that? Wait a minute, young prophet. You just heard the Lord. The Lord done showed you signs and wonders. The king done reached out his hand, tried to kill you, and then his hand got taken away. And God just protected you from the king. And then God showed you another sign and wonder because when you prayed, the king's hand came back to him. Not you, prophet. No, young prophet, not after God just let you see 
that he was with you and he just gave you, and, and now you just gonna dish him out, young prophet? Because some old prophet come talk to you? Look at this here. Look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 13. Look what it say right here. Look what it say. He went back with him to the house. So now he disobeying God. He went back with him to the house. Oh, Jesus. And he did eat bread. No, 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 no. Not you, young prophet. No, young prophet, you do it. He did eat bread. Wow. And drank water. And it came to pass, verse 20, and it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Now watch this. Here's what's scary about this text. The young prophet is now hearing this prophet that lied to him now prophesy his judgment. Now I'm about to go left in this teaching. <laughs> I'm about to go left in this teaching. Look at this here. Wow. Verse 21. Now, those of you all that I teach, you know what 21 represents. Look at 21. Look, 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 look. You can read it in your Bible when you get a chance. Uh, early tomorrow or whatever, tonight. I'm going to be teaching on Periscope in just a minute. I'm going to be on Periscope in just a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a double. <laughs> I'm preaching a double. Look, look, look what it say right here. So he went back with him and did eat the bread in his house and drank with him. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came back to the old prophet that brought him back. And verse 21 says this. In the 20. One verse, it says this. See, God is judging now. It said, he cried out unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as you have disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded thee, but you came back and have eaten bread and have drunk water in the place that the Lord told you, don't eat no bread, don't drink no water. Your carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. Oh, that's an insult. You know what God telling him? Your body ain't even going to make it. 
to the status where Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, your fathers, Elijah, and all the ones that gone be, or what, uh, you know, uh, Moses, those that have gone before you, rather, Moses, Abraham, all them, your fathers. You're not going to be in the same line of them. You just demoted yourself. You just lost your rank. Oh, gee. You just lost what I was about to do for you in your generation. I was going to take you to places in the spirit, in the anointing, in the blessing, in the grace, in, our, in the glory, in the power, in the fire, in the heavenly realm, in angelic ministry, in the prophetic anointing. I was going to take you places, but because you disobeyed me, you won't even make it to the sepulchre of the, your father. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass after he had eaten the bread. After he eaten the bread. And after he had drunk. That he saddled for him the ass. For the prophet whom he had brought back. So this old prophet saddled the ass for him. For him to ride on it. Verse 24, and when he was gone, a lion, verse 24, met him by the way and killed him. Mara mandere mendele masokole falamaya. The lion came and killed him. Look at verse 24. It said, the lion met him by the way and killed him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. So watch this. Look, watch this here. This is the prophet right here. The prophet is right here, dead. This is the, the ass. This is the lion. So the ass is over here. The lion is over here. And both of them is standing up. He's going to ask right here standing up. He's going to lie right here standing up. And here's the dead body of the prophet. Look at verse 25. And behold, men passed. Remember what I just told you. The, 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 the line was right here. The ass was right here. The dead prophet was right there. And, they, and, and the line and the ass are both standing up. Now look at this here. Verse 25, and behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the, pro old, where the old prophet dwelt. Look at verse 26. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, this is what the old prophet said. Look, listen, listen what the old prophet said. Let's go to verse 26. It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. It was, it was him. Now listen, this is the old prophet talking. He not saying, hey, I came and I lied to him. Oh my God. 
Look, look, oh, Jesus. Look, he not saying, hey, I came to him and told him it was an angel that spoke to me and I was lying to him. It was me that I tricked him up. I, 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 I told him completely something different that the Lord told him. It was me that told him that the angel spoke. Look, 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 look what he said. He said, it was the man of God who was disobedient to the Lord. Therefore, it was the Lord that delivered him unto the lion, which had torn him and killed him according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke unto him. So watch what the old prophet saying. It's not my fault. He was the one that listened to my lie. Look, look what the old prophet's saying. That's his fault. He should have stick with what God had told him in the first place. It's saying, do you understand what I'm telling you? Do, uh, do, do you understand what I'm telling you in this text? The old prophet is saying he should have stuck with what God told him in the first place. He should have stuck with it. He should have had listened. He should have stayed with what God had told him before I came to him, before I said something, before I tricked him. He should have stuck with what God said. If it was him. Even the old prophet, the old prophet, the old prophet, the old prophet is saying he should have listened to what God spoke to him. Isn't that my fault? He got tricked. He should have listened because God had already showed him. God had already told him. God had already gave him signs and wonders. He saw how the king's arm got withered. He saw how the Lord answered his prayer and put the king's arm back on. He saw. He knew the truth. And he still betrayed. And the old prophet came on the scene, said the angel of the Lord spoke to me. And the angel of the Lord told me to tell you to do what the Lord, the very same thing that the Lord had already told him not to do. And he sat right there and listened and neglected everything that God done spoke to him in secret. Neglected everything that God done revealed to him. Everything that God done taught him. Everything that God done trained him in. And watch. After he listened to the old prophet. The Lord comes and speaks to the old prophet and tell him, tell him that because he disobeyed me and listened to you, I'm going to send a lion to come get him. Let me tell you something. The old prophet didn't die. It was the young prophet that died. You know why? Because the Lord has spoke to him before the old prophet had ever came on the scene and had told him the word of the Lord. Now, saints, I want you to see this. Here, watch here. Remember, the prophet is in the middle, right here. The line is right here. The ass is right here. The prophet is in the middle. The lion right here. The ass right here. This one I want you to catch. Here's the powerful thing about this. The lion never attacked the ass. The lion never attacked the ass. The lion never goes up to the ass to eat, to destroy, to devour, to beat up, to slaughter. He never even deals with the donkey. 
Watch, the lion was specifically assigned to the prophet. When the young prophet, here's what I want you to catch. This is what I want you to catch. When the young prophet was walking with God, I want you to see this. You never heard this before. What he did not see is that the lion was plotting against his life all along. The enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may, what? So watch this. So the Lord is training the prophet and telling the prophet what to do. And the prophet, he's listening, but there comes a time when now he's casualizing what the Lord has trained him to do, training him to do, telling him to do. He start casualizing it. You know how I know he casualizes it? Because somebody comes, tells him something, and he does exactly what God had already commanded him not to do, and he takes it. He takes the offer of Satan. And watch. While he's, watch this, he's lukewarm. Because when you're on fire for God, you don't give no place to the devil. So he's lukewarm. Something that you want to catch in this story is that this young prophet is really in a weak spot. He'd already passed the test with the king. He already passed the test to not go in at the same place that he went out. He, he already passed those tests, but he fatigued. He's not replenishing himself with what God told him to do. He done forgot his assignment. He done forgot what the Lord done anointed him and trained him to do. He not moving in the spirit. So he's in a weak spot. So even when this old prophet is talking to him, he's already hungry for an escape out of what God is training him. Wow. He's looking, he's already looking for an escape out of what God is teaching him, out of what God is training him. He already looking for escape because he's already weary. He's already tired. He's already looking for something to suffice him or, or to give him a little temporary, because because watch, he hasn't eaten. He hasn't drunk, drink, drunk anything. He, he's obeying God, listening, and watch. Now, whether or not he loves the Lord is going to be revealed. See, I'm telling you right now, the Lord often pits you in places where you feel fatigued, you feel weary, you feel tired. And the Lord sit back and watch to see if you're going to obey his original word to you. If you're going to do what he told you to do when you was excited, when you felt like, oh, snap, this is a new opportunity. Oh, wow, God is doing something fresh in my life. And, and now he let the feeling, because why? Why? Satan always going to come like a royal lion. He always going to tempt and buff it. He going to come on the scene and the Lord going to let him. Because in that moment, while you feeling all those feelings, you are in the spotlight on whether or not you're going to continue with Jesus or you're going to take the options that Satan bring to you to eat satanic bread and to drink satanic water, contaminated water. Flint, <laughs> flint water, flint. You see? So when the Lord sees Oh, oh, so you going to disobey me? So, 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 fine. I'm going to send the lion to eat you up. This is what happened to so many people. You get weary and tired. You let the devil win. So when the devil win, now you in the place where he can still kill and destroy you. Because you done forgot what the Lord said before you was having these feelings of weariness. You done forgot. So anybody can come tell you anything. And you just listen. But when you're on fire for God and you're not weary, 
Your discernment is at an all-time high. I want to give you some wisdom real quick. When you are on fire for God, your discernment is sharp. It's when you get weary, you become a victim of snake bites. When you become hurt, that's when the enemy has his greatest conversations with you. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? When you become hurt, that's when Satan have his greatest conversations with you. When you offended, that's when demons have the best time with you ever. Saints, the lion was not after the donkey. The lion was not after the ass because him and the ass was standing up right beside each other and the lion never attacked the ass one time. The lion attacked the donkey. What? What the young prophet did not know that while God was training him, the lion was plotting against him. While God was training him, the lion was seeking his destruction. And because, watch this here, when he casualizes what God told him and listens to wrong advice, wrong counsel, ungodly counsel, now the lion can fulfill his plot to destroy and kill. What I'm telling you is that make sure that you don't get weary and fatigued and forget what God originally said to you so that people can come and start sowing wrong seeds, wrong instructions, wrong counsels, wrong direction for your life. And when they take you the wrong route, when you end up in hell, they ain't going to be able to help you. It's better for you to stick with the word of the Lord. It's better for you to follow what Jesus said. Instead of getting weary, where it's easy to be manipulated by flesh and blood in their revelation, by the traditions of men, by self-righteousness, by the form of godliness that denies the power. Stay on fire for God so no man bewitch you. You hear what I said? This apostolic. Stay on fire for God so no man bewitch you so that you don't turn into the church of Galatia where people switch you out of the spirit to function in the flesh and you lose your eternal life listening to them. I'm going live on Periscope. Bless everyone.